Martial law, EMPs, collapse of the economy, increase in natural disasters, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. They will stop at nothing until they achieve their ominous goal. And when the final card is in place, a new world order. Then comes the Antichrist. Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and we have got some stuff to talk about today that is just literally shocking. I've got an expert on here with me. His name is Bob, and he owns TradeGenius.co. Now, Bob has written a book that is available on his website, and it's called Stocks That Will Survive the Economic Collapse. Now, this book is free for download, no strings attached. He really genuinely is passionate about these subjects, and he really wants to help people. Bob is a devout Christian who takes end times events seriously. Now, not only is he an expert in the areas of the economy, trading, and the stock markets, but he happens to be well-versed and well-educated in a number of other areas, such as weather and end time events. Let me give you a little background on Bob. First off, he was an officer in the USMC, He also worked as an executive in M&A and strategic planning for two Fortune 500 companies for over 20 years. He was semi-retired about 10 years ago when he pursued trading full-time, thus TradeGenius.co. He wrote a trading program to consistently enjoy winning trades. He currently enjoys trading and educating people with Trade Genius using his program. Again, there's a whole bunch of information on his website, but if you're interested in his program, again, that website is tradegenius.co. As I mentioned, he is a strong Christian, very economically aware. He sees Bible prophecy coming alive before his eyes. And Bob wants to share with you those very things that God is speaking to him and that he is seeing here in just a moment. He also has some unique perspectives on what is going on. In fact, one of the subjects we're going to discuss involves the crazy weather and the big untold story behind all of that. And we're going to discuss all the economic chaos that we're seeing happening all around us and where we stand in Bible prophecy with that, because we're hearing a lot of news about the economy crashing. So Bob, since you've been sitting there patiently waiting, please tell the listeners and me what in the heck is going on with all of this strange weather, the economy, and just everything in general that's happening that seems so prophetic. And it just seems like things are just going to happen from this point forward rapidly as they have been. And I also feel like I should mention the weather has been nuts where I'm living at. Here it is almost June and I've had to wear my fall and winter clothes. It's done nothing but rain, but of course that's a given in springtime, but it has been cold. For example, I went to the grocery store tonight and I had to wear winter clothes and a winter coat. So this is very strange. I think this has happened slowly over time to where there are a lot of people who don't notice it and they think this is how it is every year. But I can go back in my mind to when I was a kid and it was not like this. So, Bob, like I said, what is going on? <laughs> well, it's too funny, Lynn. You know, it's, uh, when we talked last and you were telling me about the weather, I was, um, I said, hey, I know what's going on with that. And, and just yesterday, uh, the, I, I pull a lot of information down from the different uh, uh, USDA and the farm reports and get different crop estimates and so on and so forth because I trade, I trade in the commodity space. And... One of the things that popped up, knowing I was going to talk to you, is it was kind of really timely. You know, God has no coincidences. And they talked about the uh, upper Ohio Valley, northwestern and northeastern Indiana, northwestern Ohio, that they're not able to get the crops in the ground because of all the rain that we're having. And, and there's a reason for that, Lynn. And it's in, and the reason is actually kind of scary. It's, it's, um, it makes perfect sense. It's well documented. It's happened before, 
but it but it, it's going to have an incredible impact on many people's lives far greater of an impact than, than people really realize but there's a really 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 good chance that we're entering into what's called a, a mini ice age now what that doesn't mean is you know the earth isn't going to turn into a snowball but what it does mean is that we're going to have situations where the seasons are going to be getting shorter the weather is going to be getting cooler the weather is going to be getting wetter and, and, and what's going to happen with the crops is that they're, they're going to have to put them in later in the year. They may not get them in at all because of the, the, uh, the ground is too wet. And then when it's time for them to harvest, the frost may come and kill them. And, and that's already starting to happen. And there's, there's like seven different things that are coming together that, that's, going to, that's going to bring this to fruition it's, it's starting now. In fact, it started in 2005, and, it, and it's going to reach its climax around, around anywhere around 2030, 2035. And if, if you indulge me, I'll kind of walk through what those are in order of, of the frequency in which they happen. And so what's happening now, what you're seeing now, Lynn, is the first uh, fruits of what they would call a La Nina year. Last year, you probably heard in the news, El Nino, El Nino, El Nino, El Nino, and all oh, the world's getting hotter, and it's going to get really hot, and we're, we're, going, we're going to be, you know, the earth's going to cook and all that good stuff because the government is using that to try to control everybody. But that El Nino is really the last gasp. And so whenever we have a strong El Nino, we have a really, really strong La Nina. And what that means to people here in America is where you live, Lynn, you're going, to, you're going to have a kind of a wet and cool spring. Summer is going to be warm and very dry. And then you're going to have a very early, wet, cool fall. And you're going to have a cold winter again. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm looking forward to warm and dry right now because it has been nothing but wet, like I said. But yeah, it's just been incredibly strange, the weather. And I think a big part of the problem that people aren't really noticing this, now don't get me wrong, I think there's a lot of people that are paying attention, but this has happened so slowly over a period of time that people, there are a lot of people out there that think, oh, nothing's changed. And it really has. I mean, I can remember going back to when I was a kid and how the weather was compared to now. And it just doesn't, it wasn't like this as much as it is now. There were days, or you may have had one week where weather was strange going into the new season. You know, it kind of shifts slowly, but it's just crazy now. Yeah. And, you know, and you're, and you're right, Lynn. And what happened is, is that the La Nina El Nino years are every three to five years you have these events. But what's happened now is we've layered the second level on. And, and what happens is there's a 30 year cycle. And it's called the Atlantic and the Pacific Oscillators. And really what that means in layman terms is that sometimes the oceans are in a warm phase and sometimes they're in a cool phase. And they're not always aligned. But right now we have La Nina happening and we have the Pacific that is cold and we have the Atlantic that is cold. And what that does is it makes what's happening now even worse. And so... When you were saying it's slowly coming up, if you notice every year it's been getting a little bit cooler, a little bit wetter, and, and that's really started in, in 2005. And this cycle, this particular 30-year cycle is scheduled to go through 2035. And what's happening on top of that, Lynn, is that the sun is getting quieter. And, you know, I don't know if, you, if people have heard the phrase uh, solar minimum or maunder minimums, or things of that nature. But what it means is the sun has, is a, it's, has a magnetic um, convection or circulation in, around it. And every 11 to 22 years, it has a cycle where the, the spots are bigger or the stop, spots are smaller. But every 180 years, it goes quiet. And the, earth has, the sun has gone quiet at the same time the oceans have gotten cooler. And what that means, Lynn, is that the, uh, the earth will then get cooler. And the really scary part of this is that, you know, the politicians and the elites and all those guys, they're, they're always quick to point out, hey, you know, the earth can get warmer by one or two degrees. And, you know, that might cause some issues here and there, but it frees up vast tracts of land for agriculture. 
But when the Earth gets one degree colder, just one degree colder, for every degree, Lynn, it's 250 miles of the northern and the southern parts of the world are no longer able to grow crops. And, and, and we, we are expecting over the next 12 years one to three degree coolness in the earth. That means most of Canada over the next 12 years will, will have crop failures. Most of Russia will have crop failures. Most of Northern Europe will have crop failures. And in China, they're going to have crop failures. And this is, this is primarily the wheat growing belts of the world. And it's going to push all the crops farther south. While they're pushing the crops farther south, they're running into the, the jet stream that is from the tropics that is moving north. And it's going to meet with all this severe weather. And what happened last week, we got a foretaste of that. And there was a, and I, I, and I put videos out every day. And so I put, a, and you just go out to a website or you can subscribe to them. They're free is I talked a little bit about this because just in five days, some of the weirdest weather that we've seen in decades happened. And the entire Midwest, from where you live, Lynn, all the way down through Texas, all the way out to Colorado, we had probably 14 or 15 states that had severe enough hail embedded in their thunderstorms that it destroyed the corn crops. And these farmers are now at, or in a position where it's too late for them to put that back in the ground. And so now they have to figure out. Well, if we even go back to the Bible on things like this, one of the very judgments predicted by Isaiah was drought. Like in Isaiah 24, verses 3 and 4, the earth will be completely laid waste. The earth mourns and withers. The world fades and withers. You know, drought is one of the consequences of sin and disobedience. You know, another form of judgment prophesied by Isaiah is extreme heat. Um, heat severe enough to kill people. Isaiah 24, 6, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left. I mean, there's a lot more, but the Bible makes it clear, even in the past, God used weather control in the past to speak to the people. You know, flooding rain in Genesis, um, drought in, in Deuteronomy, violent storms and hail all through Exodus, Joshua, and Ezekiel, and even in Mark it's mentioned, darkness and gloom, um, all sorts of things. So this is one of the signs of the end, the very things that you're talking about. Please tell us more. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, as, you know, as, as uh, Christ was speaking to John at Patmos, he said these things will quicken over time. And the climate thing works the same way. You, remember you were talking about it was, like a, it was like a frog in a pot being boiled. You know, hey, I don't really notice anything. Oh, yeah, that was a weird weather. Oh, that was a weird snowstorm. Oh, that was a weird this. Then all of a sudden, they start happening more and more frequently. And that's what caught my attention. And, and that's why I, I put the book out because I'm like, wow, this stuff's really starting to happen fast. And as you know, it says in the Bible also, too, is that people will be working a whole day, a whole day's wage just to earn enough to eat. And those days are going to come, Lynn. You know, our prediction for the commodities is that when, when we get into the mid and early uh, 2020s is that food prices will be five times. That's five times what people are paying now. And I just don't know how people are going to be able to afford it. And so that's, that's why I started looking. I said, hey, how am I going to protect my family? What am I going to be able to do? And, and you know, there are ways, and, and that's why... You know, when people, you know, it's, it's one thing to be able to be a prepper and, and store food, and you should. And if you have a garden, you should have it. And if you can, you can, you can farm your, on your property, you should do it. Put food away, you should do it. But also, you know, you should get familiar enough with the stock market. And there are, there are very, very easy things to buy that would give your family a hedge for the inflation because as the food prices go up, you're also going to be able to see these stocks rise with it. And that was the genesis behind behind the book. And the book is free. I want people to read it. Yeah, everybody, the book is free. That is at tradegenius.co. You can go there. He's got free videos he does, that he uploads. What was it, Bob, every day that you put a new video up that helps people? Every day I do a recap. Every day I give out free stock trip, stock tips. And and then, you know, we, we do education. And then we have some things we charge for, obviously, because that's our business. But but we give a lot of stuff away for free to educate people and to 
help them become more successful in the stock market. And let me back up what he was just talking about, about the economy. I'm just looking at some of the headlines about the economy um, from the Economic Collapse blog. And uh, Michael Snyder takes his stuff from mainstream, okay? So he has links to all the stuff he's talking about. But some of the headlines here, undeniable evidence that the real economy is already in recession mode. Um, Watch Venezuela because food shortages, looting, and economic collapse are coming to America, too. Unemployment claims spike again as we get more scientific evidence. The middle class is shrinking. And here's just two more. Um, There's a movie coming out called Amerigeddon, and it's so true. This movie reeks with truth. Are you ready for chaos that will ensue when the power grid is brought down? So that's another thing that they're warning about is the power grid. I've actually seen some stuff on the news about that. And finally, 11 signs that the U.S. economy is rapidly deteriorating even as the stock market soars. And he mentions a bunch of points in that article. I don't, you know, I won't take away time to mention all of them, but there's 15 different points that are very important. So, um, you know, pay attention to what Bob is saying here. He knows what he's talking about. I told you his background and his experience. He is an expert in the areas in which he is um, talking about to do with the economy. Go ahead, Bob. Sorry about that. No, and, and, and just to, to take off what you're saying, Lynn, is, is that. You're absolutely right, and, and people are, are probably scratching their head and saying, how can the stock market be going up when everything is going going bad? And, and because it's really, it's really a fraud. And so you have the central bankers from around the world, and then now they, before they would lie to you, now they don't care and they're just telling you the truth, is that in Japan, Japan owns 40, 40% of their company stock through the stock market. And we, you know, people have probably heard of the, the term the plunge protection team. Well, that's our Federal Reserve. You, you ever wonder why when the market's like crashing, all of a sudden, why did it turn around and just shoot straight up? It's because our central bank is using our money, you know, and, and, and they're propping the stock market up, you know, to, to protect their, uh, the banks and, and the elites. And, and so they're creating they're trying to create this fantasy like the Wizard of Oz that all is well, and at the same time, the, the middle class is just being absolutely crushed. Now, I live in California, and, and my wife and I just sit there, and we just, we just talk to ourselves, and we said, I don't know how people, you know, we're lucky to, we bought our house 20 years ago. We're like, I, I don't know how people can afford to even live here. I don't know how they can afford to even rent here. You know, we were just talking to a realtor, and she said it's $4,000 a month just to have a regular, regular starter home in Southern California, just to rent one. And then you couple that with the, the, the farce of Obamacare, where you're still paying eight to $10,000 you know, a, a year for health insurance before you can even use the health insurance. And then you have job wages that aren't going up as people are just getting squeezed. And, and the middle class is just getting destroyed. And... And then if we add to this the worry over, you know, oil prices and food prices and, and you know, something's going to break, Lynn, and, and then I think they're going to lose control. And that chaos that you were just referring to will, will, will come to pass. You know, we have, if you look at Venezuela, when you get to a socialist country, people are totally dependent on the government. And when the government fails, people don't know what to do. And so, you know, you know, you live in the city and you live in the city with a lot of people dependent on the government and that government fails. Well, they're going to come to you, you know. So, you know, for one, I wouldn't want to be living near any big cities when this thing all comes to pass. And we are in a recession. All the all the indicators say so. And, and they're having a hard time keeping the stock market up. And so if you look at a chart, Lynn, from the middle of 2015, in fact, if you go all the way back to the summer of 2014, is the, the stock market has not gone up. So for the last two years, people who've been putting their money into the stock market have gained zero. Zero. You know, and, and, and inflation is coming up right behind them. So even what they're putting away is not even going to be worth it to them to, you know, to even use when it becomes time because the inflation is going to eat it all up. So he's absolutely right about what's going on with with, with the economy. So, um, you know, 
and then just segueing back to the to the climate thing because it's going to affect so many things. Is that you know once as you, you look at I think Venezuela and Greece are just classic examples of failed states. And I'm just going to shift over to China because I think once China goes, it's going to ripple throughout the world. So right now, China has two areas in which they grow crops. They have the northeast where they grow their wheat, and then they have the east central area where they grow their rice. So when we go into this cooling period in which we're, we've already entered, is that the wheat growing areas are going to be cool and wet. It's going to be very similar to the weather that you have, Lynn, except a little cooler. And so they're and 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 the Chinese government is extremely corrupt. So these these people have a very difficult time as it is getting the crop out of the ground and where it needs to go. And so they're going to have trouble getting their wheat crop out of the ground in the next two years. And rice is going into a drought right now, so they're going to have trouble with rice. I don't know if people remember 2011 when they had the Arab Spring, but what they also had was the big rice spike. And China was importing all the rice from all over the world when there wasn't any rice reserves. And the price of rice just shot up two to three times. Well, imagine that for everything. And, and that's what's coming down the pike. And so China right now is, is, is suffering food inflation at 8%. And what China is trying to do at the same time is they're trying to devalue their currency so that they can keep exporting to you know, places like the United States. Well, now they're trapped. And so if they keep trying to devalue their currency as their food prices go up, their people starve because they can't afford it. And if they don't raise their, if they don't devalue their currency, they're not selling enough to people like us and their people are unemployed and they don't have money to buy food. So I think China's already lost. And they're, what they're doing right now, Lynn, is they're selling their dollar reserves as fast as they can to try to forestall this event. Their, their trade has collapsed. In fact, world trade has collapsed. And, 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 you know, we don't see it so much because we're an importing nation. And in, in some glimmers of hope, we'll probably be better than most other people because our dollar will actually go up and we'll be able to manufacture more here. But it'll be very painful for us. But places around the world like China it, it, is, is really going to be in deep weeds. And, you know, as I was looking into that, and I'm rambling on here, Lynn, so cut in if you want. But as I was looking into that, one thing that really struck me was about three or four years ago, the president of China said, we're going to rebuild, we're going to rebuild the Marco Polo route, the Silk Road. And so they're building a highway and railroad infrastructure from Beijing, China, all the way to Karachi, Pakistan, uh, to Turkey, and, and even into um, Iran and into Syria. And they're doing that because they know they they can read they can read the climate reports too. They're not buying the propaganda. They've been buying agricultural land in Africa, like it's going out of style. And I I have a neighbor who just spent who just spent three years in in Namibia and in in Zimbabwe and in Zambia, and he said he said the the, the Chinese have overrun the place. And they bought all the farmland, and they take all the crops, and they're moving it. They're moving it out of those countries, and they're taking it back to China. Well, they can't get everything shipped on boats, and they're worried about if things really happen. Is that you know India and and the Indonesia? They're not very good friends of China, and they know the Americans are there too. So they're going to try to truck all this stuff up through into China via the road. And what really struck me was when I was thinking about the Bible is, and I think it's Revelation 6, 8, um, I'm doing it from memory, is, 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 is you know, when things get really bad and, and China needs to, to actually start taking over some of this area, I figured how the 200 million men are going to get to where they need to go into the Middle East. Well, they're going to have the Silk Road built. Isn't that pretty wild? And so, you know, it's one of the things that are just coming to life to me is, is watching watching China build this road that could be used to transport troops as well as transport economic cargo and things of that nature. 
And so that really, that really, really struck me. And, and the other thing too is with, with all these nations failing is that, you know, you saw with, you saw with Greece and you saw also with uh, Crete, but there's other places in Europe now that's going to happen is, is, is Spain is in big trouble and Italy's in big trouble and France is in big trouble. And so what they're thinking of doing is once your money's in the bank, they're, they're now voting in those countries to eliminate banknotes, you know, uh, currency. They have a 500 euro note. And so a lot of people use those notes to keep cash in their home. And they're going to eliminate those notes. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to push everybody into the banking system. And once they have everybody in the banking system, they're going to try to take it cashless. And where we read that before. And so once they do this, that's what this negative interest rates that you're hearing about, they call it NERP. Well, now they have that in Europe. Most of Europe is now in, in what they call NERP. Japan's in NERP. And in fact, the United States is, is, is 85% of all the bond yields that have a positive yield to them are in the U.S., Okay, that means everywhere else in the world is that people are buying government bonds and actually paying the government for privilege. But once the United States goes negative and your money's locked in the bank, they are essentially the bankers, the elites, are basically able to tax you without legislation because the Federal Reserve is unaccountable. And so you're going to have money in the bank. In fact, you, we see it now. You just don't really realize it. You know when you go to the bank... Why are they charging me $15 to have a checking account or $25 to have a checking account? Well, those are the beginnings of those kind of fees. Pretty soon you're going to have money in your account or your business that you own keeps the money in there for payroll. Well, why did I get dinged for half a percent on this money? Well, because of negative interest rates. So those are the things that are, are just going to cause incredible economic dislocations. And, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse because – People don't have enough money to live on. The government's going broke. And then we're going to have these dislocations with climate that I think is the big wild card that people don't really realize. And, and I think it's going to cause some, some incredible stress. However, for the prepared, and until God comes back for us, is that there are ways in which you can protect yourself. And, you know, the first thing... You know, you do, you do it on the home front is, is, you know, you make sure that, you know, do I have enough food? Do I have enough water? You know, in California, that's something we have to be concerned about. You know, do we have um, the right medical supplies? Are we in good health? Are the things that we're doing to keep in good health? And in California, in other words, where it's sunny is that, you know, we have solar on our house. And in fact, one of the things I didn't share with my you know, with my background with you is, is that I'm also an owner of a solar energy company and we've had the company for 10 years. And so one of the reasons why I bought the company and expanded it was because I wanted to make sure my family was energy independent. And so those are the kind of things that you should think about if it's, if it's feasible for your family is to get solar energy, uh, have some battery backup power or generator power, so that you can uh, take care of your family, learn how to, you know, can your food and, and things of that nature. But on the financial side is that there are things that are going to go up when the stock market comes down hard. And in 2001, when we had a big crash, and in 2008, when we had a big crash, there are things that went up. And there are people who made, made out very, very well. And we may not like it, but I would rather be on the side where I have money and able to help people versus being a, in a situation where I don't and I feel trapped. And, and those are the kind of things that, that motivate me. My manifesto, if you will, of behind trade genius was I seen so many people that are not very good at, at trading or, or are just too busy to see around the corner. And, you know, and I kind of live for this stuff, you know, being in strategic planning and, I'm always trying to look at what don't I know that I should know. And those are the things that are prompting me to say, okay, you know, we need to probably have um, certain stocks in our portfolio that will 
will rise during food inflation. And so I point those out in the book. You won't need me for that. Just get the book and look at it and add it to your portfolio. If you want to trade it and get better pricing and, 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 and build a bigger portfolio, then you can subscribe to, to our company and, and we'll help you get in and out and, and make a higher return on that. And then there's other things you can do too in terms of, of, of protecting yourself with the stock market as it goes down. There's certain stocks to buy and to hold and let the crisis pass over you. And so, so those are the kind of things that, that I'd be able to help people with. And I point those things out in the videos every day when I, when I do it. So those are the kind of things that I would recommend people do and look into and, and um, pay attention to as, as things get worse. And, and looking at, after the election. Bob, I had a question. Yeah. Could you, um, before you, I know you're getting ready to say something about the election, but um, when you're done with whatever you're about to say, um, I would like you to fill the listeners in a little bit more on, I know you just touched on it, but a little bit more about your company because I think it's interesting. You were talking to me about it and about you know your success rates and things like that um, it might be interesting to share with the listeners too. Okay. Uh, no problem. All right, so, you know, with, with the election coming up, um, and I'm not really sure who's going to win the election, and I don't know if it really, really matters. And, and one of the things that I've adopted in my life for a long time is, and it's something I want to share with everybody else is, is, you know, there's two type of people in the world. There's people who let things happen, and there's people who make things happen. And, and I, I kind of view myself as a make things happen kind of person. So, all I really need to do is really try to understand what the, what the rules of the game are going to be to the extent that I can. And, and when I think about the election that's coming up is, is that it's going to be an opportunity for those in power to try to grab even more power. And so I think we have a short window in which to make sure that, you know, do we have alternate currencies available to us? You know, do we have cash out of the banking system? You know, are we thinking about, about do we have a place to go if we live in a city that can be overrun by people who are looking for basically to survive and knowing that you probably have means to come to you? And, you know, you just have to look no further than what's happening in Venezuela to see that, you know, the only places that are safe are in the countryside. And it's the same with Argentina as well. When they had their crisis two years ago, is the cities were a mess. And the only people that were safe were people that had a place to go into the countryside. So, I mean, so I, I just wanted to kind of finish with that and, and you know, and just going back. That's interesting. You just, you just reminded me of something. Sorry. But uh, the house that I live in now, and I shared this on another radio program um, not too long ago, but um, I was living in the suburbs and uh, in an apartment, and the Lord was speaking to me to move, and I didn't know where to move. I was looking through the ads for places for rent, and so I finally went to the Lord, and I said, God, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble finding a place. Nothing seems right, and I'm frustrated, and I, I, I need to move. My lease is up, and I'm paying extra to go month to month. And what do I do here? And, and I wasn't getting any answer. So I finally said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, Lord. This way I'll know it's from you. Make somebody come to me with an offer because I know that's not going to happen because I don't know anybody. Nobody would just come to me with an offer. So I know if someone does, then I'll know it's you. Sure enough, shortly after I prayed that, a, a guy came to me on Facebook and he was... um he knew my brother way back when. Uh, my brother's like three years older than me, and um, I'll be 43 years old in June. So um, anyhow, he came to me. Nobody knew I was thinking about moving. I hadn't told anybody. He comes to me and says, I have a house um, for rent. It's renovated. It's out in the country. And I said, okay. And I said, let me pray about that and think about it. He sent me pictures of the house. So I prayed about it, and I said, okay, Lord, I need confirmation from you. I need more confirmation from you. I know you had this thing happen, but I need more confirmation. So then my mom's friend um, 
My parents didn't know I was looking to move either. I had not discussed it with them, had not said anything about the house, nothing. So my mom's friend was driving to church, and my face came to her mind. And the Lord, one of the things the Lord told her was to tell me to do it and do it now. So I had no idea. I didn't want to come out. I was leery. You know, I'm weird about areas I don't know. I get real skittish about areas I do not know. Um, I don't know this area. It's uh, about 40 minutes away from where I previously had lived. And um, I have mold allergies. The basement gets wet because it's an old cellar. And it's been doing nothing but raining. I've got, uh, as I was talking to you earlier, I've got uh, you know air purifiers running everywhere. And I knew the basement leaked and got wet. And I was like, Lord, how could you want me to move to this place? You know, it looks like a nice house. It's beautiful. It's got two acres of land. It's out in the country. But there's wetness in the basement. And along with wetness comes musty mold. Are, are you sure you want me to move out here? So he uh, he told me to move out here. And I'm sure he has various reasons. He told me some of them. But I just find it strange that he just suddenly up and moved me. I've never done anything like this. Moved me out to the country. My parents were, um, after living in uh, Ohio all of their lives, just last summer they were moved to move out to the mountains to Colorado. So God's moving people different places. I know other people that have been impressed upon God to move. So that's interesting. You were just talking about being out in the country and so forth. Yeah, I think if you know if you can't move, you should definitely know people who you can bug out to. And you know, five years ago, and we were talking about this the other day. You know, five years ago, I would have probably laughed at all the things today that have me extremely concerned. And you know, and you can just see it. I, the, the level of dependency people have. I mean, people can't even they can't even do the most basic things. And we had, I don't know, six months ago, I forget what city it was in, when the um, the uh, EBT cards, the cards that are now the food, I think it was here in California, <clears throat> the food stamp cards, the system went down. And, and people absolutely rioted. And because they, they, literally, they literally have no food in their homes. And so can you imagine that, you know, if we get into a situation like, you know, they have regularly in France and Argentina where people start blocking the roads because they're striking or, or angry about something, that there's just vast majorities of our population that are just unable to cope. And so I think it's something that people need to keep in the back of their mind. And so, you know, one of the things too, you know, just kind of segueing back to what what I do at Trade Genius and why I even did this, you know, hey, you're trading on your own. I was just telling a friend the other day, the reason why I traded was so I could have total freedom. I was tired of traveling. My daughter was just born and I wanted to enjoy her and, and just enjoy the, the freedom that, that trading gives me. And so I had a lot of friends that were curious as to why such a young guy can just get up and go. And so I started helping people learning their stories about how they're trading. And I, I realized very quickly is that, that a lot of people really are either afraid to trade or don't know how to trade. And when I mean trading, I mean just even basic stock picking and holding, holding the right things for the right amount of time. And so I started getting people onesies and twosies coming in and talking to me. Then <clears throat> next thing you know what, hey, throw a blog up there. Then all of a sudden I started getting hundreds of people and then a bunch of people following me, and then I, I had 100,000 page views on my blog, and, 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 and somebody said to me, hey, Bob, you probably need to get a little bit more organized. So I sat down and figured out what I was doing mathematically, and we, we wrote a program. And so I used that program to guide my buy signals and my sell signals. And one of the things that you asked me when we, when we first got to know each other is, is you know, what, what kind of performance – do these signals do for you? And so the last three years, we've averaged 80, 80%. This is since I've had it out and available for people to, to review, 80% return. And last year, we were over 90%. And this year, going into, into May, the signals are up over 100%. And, and the reason why is, is because there is the rules to the stock market. 
And so even though it may seem chaotic, it, it still performs as a rules-based entity. And so my, I don't want to call it an algorithm because it's really not an algorithm. It's, it's really just a set of rules and algebra that tell me, hey, Bob, this, this stock is worth buying. It's worth buying now. And what we do is we don't get greedy. We buy the stock. We make some profit on it. We get out of the stock. And then we set ourselves up again. So I really designed it for people to be able to use it to, you know, become financially independent. But if you can't do that, is to be able to pay for some things that you can't pay for or amass wealth for your retirement. And what people don't realize is that, you know, the average rent and mortgage in the country is about twelve hundred dollars. And if you think about it, that's fifty to sixty dollars a day in the stock market. And you can do that. And you can do that very consistently. And there's certain things that we buy and sell that provide that kind of confidence that you can do something as simple as that. And so I feed my family by trading. And so so I may make sure this thing worked for me or my wife would make me get a job again. So it's, it does work. It works well. And we really have three options for people. The free option, which we talked about, look at the videos, watch what I'm doing, hear what I'm saying, read the books that we put out. You know, number two is if you value yourself as a kind of an independent thinker and, and you can do this on your own is that we have training classes. You know, we can either do individual one-on-one training or we could do group training where if you just say, hey, I just need to feel a little bit more comfortable with what I'm trying to do. And then I think I can strike out on my own. And then there's the third group of people that said, hey, you know what? Some of these guys that I have as clients are, are hedge funds, you know, people who professionally manage money. And they just like to see to make sure kind of like, hey, are you buying what I'm buying? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? So it gives people comfort. And so we have those, and, and everything's very affordable, Lynn. So I designed it to, to make sure that, that people can afford this. And it's not one of those things where, you know, I suck everybody's money out from them and say, hey, thanks a lot. We make things, everything very, very affordable for people. If they're, if they're coming along on the stock signals, they can go month to month. They can, they can, they can opt into some of the lower cost training uh, plans that we have. And, and, and really, it's designed for people to really get a good return on their money. So I wanted to tell people why I do what I do. And, and, you know, and I want to make sure it ties to my own Christian beliefs. I, I, I don't believe that I should charge as much as I can charge. I think I should charge what I should charge because, you know, to me, it's as much of a mission and, and a passion as it is a business. And that's the best combination. So I want to make sure people are prepared. I want to make sure that people have financial means to be independent or to be successful or just to have a little bit more comfort. And, and, and I want people to worry less. You know, if you're doing well with money, it takes some worries away from you and your family. And, and I want to be. Yeah, I checked it out. I checked it out and looked all through it. And it was awesome. The stuff that I saw on there and how it worked. And also, I think it's great that you give away so much stuff for free, you know, that your whole book that you've given away for free for people to help them, um, the videos that you put. I know how much time and effort it takes to make a video because that's what I do. And that's a lot of work. And, you know, that you just do that for people. And, I mean, that's great. And that you're a strong, solid Christian. And that's, you know, that's very important. And you just genuinely, just from talking to you, and I want the listeners to know this, I am I mean this genuinely from my heart, that, you know, you convey yourself as a very humble person. I can tell you just really love people and want to help them. And I think those are some really strong, important qualities. And you're very smart. Oh, um, well, well, thank you. You're too kind. And, 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 I, and I truly believe what I say. I, 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 really, I really want people to be, to just have comfort that there, there, there are solutions out there. It's overwhelming for people. And, and I can see the stress in a lot of people. And, you know, and you, you just want to help people to the extent that you can. And, you know, you don't have to have a lot of money either to start trading. 
So do well, I. Well, let me just interject one thing before I forget. I'm so sorry. I want people to know, you know, one of the reasons that I brought Bob on the show and we're going to um, do recordings from time to time together is because there's a lot of stuff going on with the economy right now. And if you go look, like I said, at the Economic Collapse blog, Michael Snyder's website, something's bound to happen. A lot of people believe it's going to happen this year. I never put a date on anything. I don't know. The way it looks, it could very well be this year. Like I said, I don't know. But things are happening that are showing us it's getting closer and closer the time of economic collapse and I'm telling you, when that happens, a whole bunch of other events are going to happen. It's going to be like the domino effect, martial law. I mean, I I witnessed how people freaked out just a few years ago when the electric was out all over around Dayton, Ohio, and surrounding areas. It was out for over two weeks because of some, there was a hurricane down south, and um, we had these strong tornado-like winds that were ripping trees out and stuff. And you should have seen people at the gas station. People were literally piled in. Nobody could get gas. People were cussing each other out, acting like animals. Now, if that happens just for power being out for a few weeks, can you imagine what it's going to be like when nobody can get access to their bank? They don't have money. They can't feed their family. They can't get. They can't do anything. And that it's going to be crazy. And so a lot of my subscribers and people, you know, on other social media networks ask me, okay, well, we're hearing all this bad news, but what can we do? What can we do to prepare? What what are we going to do when this happens? What can we do before it happens? So I want to have Bob on here regularly to talk about these things because he is an expert in the financial industry. He has some excellent advice to offer people. And um, I think that people really, we, we know what's coming. You know, we know it's going to happen, but we want to know what can we do. We want answers. And, and that's what Bob has is answers and resolve for what we can do. Right, Bob? Absolutely, Lynn. Absolutely. So going back to what you were saying about, um, about these things and people being prepared, I, I so rudely cut you off, but I, and I'm sorry for that, but go ahead. No, no, no. I, th- I think you're on the right, the right vein here. And, and just to maybe summarize those things is, is that when you talk about the banks, I, you know, I, I think people need to make sure that at the very least here in California, we make sure that we could survive for at least six weeks without any help from anybody. And because we have to worry about, you know, earthquakes tearing apart the grid as you, you talked about with the hurricanes. And so I think that's a great rule of thumb for people is to make sure that you have enough food in your home and that you make sure that you have um, enough water. We have to make sure we have enough water here. Um, you know, I have solar in my house and backup so that I know that I can operate uh, we make sure that we have charcoal and we have propane to be able to uh, cook our food. If the gas goes out, we have gas out here. And, and to make sure that we have, you have cash. And the other thing that my wife always does, and it's some things that people really, really need to think about, is she, she doesn't let her car get less than half full. And so those are kind of little things that you, have, you should do, prepare, think about it, and make sure that you have enough what I call bartering cash or silver People talk about silver and gold. You know, that's great. But silver is better than gold because gold is too heavy. And 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 silver is more for what I would call barter money. So you should have silver anyway because you're going to be able to use it in a time when the banking system goes down. And, and you know, with the, with the negative interest rates, if you notice, gold and silver have just skyrocketed. And silver is one of the stocks that were commodities that I recommend people own is because when you go to negative interest rates, there's no need to have a bank that's going to take your money is, is, you know, if, if you have excess cash and you're not using it to invest, then you should, you should have silver and get it out of the banking system. So those are the things that, that, that you need to think about just what I would call on the most basic level. And the other thing too is, you know, we're in a community of Christians and, and I'm sure you are, Lynn, you have your circle and people should have a circle of friends. 
people that they know, that trust, that have different skills than they do, so that you guys can rely on and, and help each other and, and be able to, to operate more effectively. Because I agree with you, Lynn. I think things are happening. I think things are quickening. And, and I think, you know, I truly believe if, if it doesn't happen this year for the climate, next year for sure, we'll have a major region have a climate, have a climate related ag collapse. And, and this is not just me being wildly speculative. It has happened already. And it, and, it, and it happens with regularity. And in every 180 to 200 years, we run into these minimums that are severe enough to cause this. That's right. And people, for, the, for those of you listening, remember I read his uh, credentials off to you in the beginning of this video. Listen to what he's saying. He's not you know, sitting here prophesying something. He's actually telling you um, information based on statistics, based on factual information, based on things that are happening. He knows what he's talking about. Um, expert in this industry. And so listen to what he's saying. I just want to tell my listeners or reinforce to my listeners here because I really want people to be prepared. Go ahead. Yeah, and I would I would encourage people to do a little bit of homework is, is to go and just check your areas for the meteorology, unless you live out on the West Coast where where it's a little sketchier, but I would look at the weather patterns that happened from 1800 to 1830 to give you a good sense of what what the least is going to happen here. And then I would go back and I would look at what happened in the 1640s to the 1680s in Europe because there really wasn't anybody living here at the time to see what happens when I would think on the worst case scenario. And these things are all mathematical and, and, and they're predictable and they're happening and they're happening as they're prescribed. And so we're now having a confluence of seven different climatic events coming together over the next 12 years. It started in 2005. It'll reach its, reach its worst around 2030, 2035. You know, we have... There's the moon cycles, there's the La Nina cycles, there's the cold ocean cycles, there's the sun cycle, and then there's what they call the planetary alignment cycles. And all these have gravitational effects on each other, which affect the magnetic fields, which affects the way the climate operates on the Earth. And so when you, when you look at the climate, is that the jet stream, everybody knows what a jet stream is, that's what kind of carries the fronts around, is that when, when the magnetic fields start to subside because the sun is not as strong, the magnetic fields get a little wackier. And so they start dipping down really low and coming back up. I don't know if people realize this, but we've had snow in central Mexico this year. We've had snow and hail on Caribbean islands this year. And, and so those things don't have. We've had snow and flooding in Saudi Arabia. They had two hurricanes hit Yemen and Oman. These are, these are events that haven't happened in hundreds of years, and they're happening in front of our very eyes. And the government's not going to encourage us investigating this because it is not in their best interest for us to get all freaked out about the mini ice age because they'll lose control of the population. So they're, 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 they're putting us into a slumber here talking about global warming so they can do some of the things that you've talked about in the past, Lynn, around, hey, we got to set up Agenda 21. we got to keep people from going from one place to another. we got to set up camps so that people who are going to be the most vocal or violent, that we can separate them from society. You know, we're going to prepare ourselves, you know, to make sure that we have what we need as the elites to run the country. We're going to, we're going to close the banking systems down so that we can control the people. And then when food starts getting into shortages, we're going to control the food, and they're definitely going to have to listen to us. So those are, those are things that I see on the horizon. And, and Well, yeah, and that's all setting up this whole new world order, one world government system, and we as Christians know what happens after that. After that, that's when 
um, the Antichrist or the man who will be the Antichrist is going to come forward and we're going to need a one world leader. And so this is all playing right into everything John the Revelator saw many, many years ago and wrote about in the book of Revelation, even going back to the book of Daniel. Um, these things are happening now. What an exciting time that we live in. And it's humbling to know that I believe all of us who are alive in this world right now, we're handpicked by God, whether good or evil. You know, God made the evil for the day of evil. Um, we were all handpicked by God and selected to be exactly where we're at living in this time and to be doing what we're doing. And as God is leading some of us and opening doors for things, we were all picked to be here for this very hour. And that in itself is very humbling. Our time is about up, Bob, but I want to encourage people to please go to tradegenius.co. Again, it's not .com, it's .co. Bob has got a bunch of um, free things on there for you, including his book, Stocks That Will Survive the Economic Collapse. There are no, um, you know, there's no tricks or anything to get you to buy something. He does have a service on there I encourage you to look at. Um, Bob, what is the exact name of that service that you offer? If people are interested, they can subscribe and sign up for that. So we just call it the trade signal stocks, the trade genius stock signals. And so when they go to the page, if they can peruse the different options that we have. And so uh, we have no fancy name for it. It's just the trade genius stock signals. Okay. So you heard what Bob had to say. So if you want to, please, I encourage you to check that out um, and read up on all the info. He provides a bunch of information about that service that he just mentioned he offers. But again, Bob really wants to help people to be prepared. That is his passion. That is one of his calls is to help people be prepared. And that's why he does have a bunch of um, you know free information on there. That is not to sell you something. The only thing he wants to, uh, wants to get into people's minds and hearts is to get right with Jesus Christ. We are in the end times and that people need to be prepared um, with everything they possibly can, including financially. And he knows a ton of stuff about the economy, as we've already mentioned. Bob, is there any final things you'd like to say to the listeners before we um, end the show here? Uh, no, I think I think we covered things very well. I, I, and I, I, I do agree with how you uh, summarized everything, Lynn, is, is that, you know, I definitely am here to help. Uh, you know, there's a chat function or the email, you know, ask the questions, you know, um, let me tell. Let me help find out how I can help you, and and uh, I, I will certainly do so. And and I really, really appreciate the time, and I'd love to be on again and, and talk about any topic that you think is uh, important. You just know so much about different areas of the things that I specifically do videos about. So uh, that would be great. Well, listen, everybody, thank you to all of our listeners for taking the time to listen to the show. We're going to have Bob on again. And um, I just encourage all of you to pray and to be prepared. Again, his website is tradegenius.co. 